Hello. In this lecture, we'll be talking about component testing. Objective. Why are we performing component testing and what is its objective? First, we'll learn about the focus of component testing. It focuses on components that are separately testable. If you have a complete software, what are the components that you can take out and test individually? That is the focus of component testing. Now, let's find out its objectives. The first objective is to reduce the risk. Then you're reducing the risk of software failure during operational use. The second objective is verifying whether the functional and non-functional behaviors of the components are as designed and specified. Two of the important factors of component testing are the design documents and the code. You have to compare the two to check if the code is implemented the way it was designed to. That's why it says, verify whether the functional and non-functional behaviors of the components are as designed and specified. Now the third objective of component testing, building confidence in the component's quality. Whenever we find a defect in the component, we reduce the risk as well as raise the confidence in the component's quality. This component works as it should. And when it is integrated with other components, they will also work as intended. And this is the last objective of component testing, finding defects in the component and preventing the defects from escaping to higher levels. So we have to find the defect in the component being tested and then stop it from reaching the next level, which is the integration level. Those were the objectives of component testing. And as you can see, they all focus on individual components. Now, a few points to remember before we move on. In the iterative model, where the testing is done again and again, like in the Agile method, continuous code change will happen. So in the first iteration, the code will change. The second iteration, the code will change again. And if the customer provides feedback, then the code will change yet again. So in the iterative development model, we have to automate component regression. Manual testing is difficult here since the code is changing very fast. But if the components are automated, then we can keep up with the pace of the project. And the final point here is that automated testing will help us build confidence since manual testing will take up a lot more time and this is faster. Next, we discuss the environment in which we do the component testing. First, we need isolation. The component should not be connected to any other components. It should be the smallest unit in the code. And the final point is that it should be an individual component. Now, what else can we need for component testing? First is the mock objects. These are the dummy projects like stubs, drivers. Next is service virtualization. You might need to visualize how the component will be finally used. What are the valid and invalid values when implementing the code? These type of virtualizations can become necessary. The final one is stub and drivers. So mock objects, dummy objects, harness, stub and drivers, these all refer to the same thing. The last point of discussion is cover. What will this component testing cover? During the testing, you can find the functional calculation mistakes. The next one is non-functional memory leaks. When executing the code, if the memory is insufficient, you'll find out about that here. The final one is structural decision testing. If there are conditional functions, like if then functions, that were not in the design document, then you can discover them here. So these are the points you have to remember, the objectives and purpose of component testing. That's all from this lecture. Until next one, happy testing.